Hey, what's up, Street Talks? Eric from there, from Street Fire Blog. Street Photography Blog. So, I am obviously doing this as a promotion for Film Notes. It's on film photography, and I want to give you guys some just practical tips and misconceptions about uh, shooting film. So, getting started and I know a lot of you guys can might not have access to to purchasing film notes and supporting haptic but I want to still go through the book with you guys because I think it's uh, very useful so the first thing that's really important is know that when it comes to buying a film camera you don't need to buy an expensive film camera like mine so I'll just tell you I'll tell you the story of this uh, this camera because it's actually pretty cool. In 2011, my dream in life was to own a Leica M9, the digital Leica M9, and I fantasized about it for so long. I just imagined, you know, the day I had a digital Leica, I could just kind of cruise and peruse the streets and be like on your Cartier Person and just capturing all these decisive moments here and left. And I fantasized about the Leica M9 for so, 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 so long. Finally got it. And it was awesome for about a week. And then it just lost the, the charm and luster. And it started to collect dust like every single camera I bought. My friends in Japan, uh, Charlie Kirk, Bellamy Hunt, Mijanju, AD, Adrian, like a lot of my, my buddies in Japan, and Michael, they told me, Eric, you gotta try out shooting film, it's a shit. And I'm like, you guys are just a bunch of dumb hipsters. <laughs> like, I could just shoot it with my Leica M9 and I could just post-process it in Silver FX Pro 2 or Lightroom and make the photos look like film. And also it's cheaper, it's easier, blah, blah. And they're like, no man, you don't understand, you gotta try it out. And I'm like, okay. I cannot judge unless I've actually tried it out myself, so I'll give it a shot. So, you know, obviously I don't have a film camera. My bud Todd, Todd Hatakiyama, he's got a good YouTube channel. He said, Eric, I actually have a used like M6 that is just collecting dust in the closet. I'll give it to you as a present. And I was like, you're going to give me a free Leica M6? Lesson number one in life, have a good friends. Anyway, so Todd, my buddy Todd gives me his M6. I get it and you know put in a roll of film and I take a photo and instantly after clicking I look at the back of the LCD screen like to chimp and I'm like oh shit there's <laughs> there's no LCD screen in it and I was just scared shitless I shot the whole roll of film and I realized I actually didn't know exposure at all and I didn't know how to properly and I had no confidence in my photo making abilities and I got back the photos and most of them were pretty bad boring photos but like there's the look of film it was just so beautiful I think I just shot like Kodak Trix 400 and just the the grain the contrast the gradations between the lights and the dark like there's something that just evoked this quite emotional reaction in me and so from that moment on I was hooked and the reason why I got the Leica MP was my M9 started to just collect dust. And I was like, I better sell this before the, the new version comes out. So I end up, uh, my buddy Todd ends up helping me sell it. And I sold the M9 for about $5,000 US. And my buddy Bellamy Hunt, AKA Japan Camera Hunter, I really wanted a black paint like a MP because the cool thing about this camera is that there's something called brassing. Essentially, it's like patina is that the more you use it, there just starts to be little, you know, wear marks. And it's kind of this nice, like the, the gold color that comes out. And I mean, it's totally this superficial Japanese <laughs> wabi-sabi thing is that like the more you use something, the more beautiful it gets because it has your own wear marks. It's kind of like buying a pair of raw denim. And, you know, 
it wears certain parts of your jeans and it feels like it's yours which is kind of cool in today's world where everything is just so disposable anyways he helps me find this amazing film like mp in japan in tokyo and i think brand new the mp retails for 5000 us he found it for me for 3500 us get it and i already had this lens from before this is actually todd's original lens too and it's the only like a lens that i own and i so i no longer um own the m6 I actually gave it to my buddy Bill Reeves. His website is wrrphoto.com. Amazing photos. And he had a Leica lens that he got from his mentor, Eli Reed, aka Magnum Photographer. And I just wanted to help empower him and just pay it forward. So I ended up giving the M6 to my buddy Bill. And it was just kind of the right thing to do because Todd gave me his M6. Anyways, so I have the MP. And to be frank, M6 is better in some ways because it's a lot lighter. The, this, this camera is actually not like it's it's like a brick and also the cool thing with the MP is that you know there's this old school rewind knob but on the M6 it comes out at an angle and you could rewind it. it's actually way faster to rewind than an MP so if you want to buy a film like a the best bang for the buck is like an M6 get it from japancamerahunter.com aka my buddy Bellamy Hunt and the difference between shooting with a film like it versus a digital like it. So several reasons why I prefer to shoot with a film like it. So whenever I take a photo, click, and then I rewind the lever, it feels like pure. Uh, I have to go in a second. It almost feels like pure sex. It's just like click, rewind. Ah, oh, yeah. Like I, I can't, I can't describe. It. It's almost like a hot knife going through a slab of butter. It's pretty cool. Secondly. I don't know about you, I'm pretty addicted to my devices and the internet. In today's connected age, it's kind of nice to disconnect is that it's <laughs> there's like nothing else to distract you. So after you make a photo, you're not always just looking at your LCD screen. It forces you not to look at it. So obviously the, the point is, oh, you could get a, a Leica M-D, which has no LCD screen, or you could just tape up the LCD screen. The reason why that doesn't quite work is that I can still rush home with a digital Leica MD, download my images instantly from the SD card to the computer. Whereas with film, the quickest I can look at the photos is maybe a day, a day or two days. And so it just, it's this roadblock that forces me to just slow down and enjoy the photo making process more. Also, I think no matter how good digital technology will get, you'll never still have the, the grittiness and the rawness of uh, film photography. And that's the nice thing with film photography is that it's imperfect imperfect meaning it's not super sharp and clear and clinical like any digital photos and therefore to me it just the photos feel like i have more soul also this mofo will not become outdated by the new m10 m11 m12 m12-p whatever a digital camera is a horrible investment because the second you buy it you've already lost 20 percent value it's like buying a new car don't buy new cars buy everything used and for me personally, I like to buy almost everything used as well. So this camera in theory should be able to last me my entire life. Whereas any digital camera, like even the M9, when it came out, everyone's like, oh, this is the shit. And then there was like sensor rot issues, whatever it may be. Then the M240 comes out, everyone's like, oh, that's the best thing ever. And now that's outdated and now there's the M10 everyone's like oh my god M20 M240 sucks they want the M10 because it has a, a rewind level just like just just get the film like it like it's way cooler and it's a totally selfish thing is it's like a stupid thing is that if you show people that you shoot with a film like it they're going to think you're way cooler than if you shoot with a digital like it and that's just uh, a fact and so it's actually a better investment because you could buy a film like a and you could sell it back for probably like 100% of the value. Sometimes you could sell it for a profit, sometimes you'll take a small loss, but at worst you'll you're going to lose like 5% of your money. And you can always sell it back if you don't like it. And yeah, and just uh, the reason why I like to shoot film is that it just because it costs money, I actually appreciate making photos much more. So I think I need to go Cindy was calling me. Go to the Air Kim blog, pick up a copy of Film Notes. I included a link to the, the blog. So that's the reason why 
I prefer shooting with a film Leica, not a digital Leica, because A, it's way cooler, B, it helps me slow down, and C, I can own it for the rest of my life and not be tethered down to outdated technology. All right. And if you want to buy a film Leica, I recommend a Leica M6. In terms of lens, a starter lens is the Voigtlander 35F 2.5 lens. You get the lens pretty cheap, like less than 500 bucks. It's very sharp, it's a great lens. If you shoot with, if you have like as much money to blow, get a Leica MP black paint, the Leica 35F 2 Summicron. It's not cheap, but in theory it should be able to last you the rest of your life. All right, peace out.